Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. I have always loved robotics and automation stuff. Ever since I was a kid, it's been my biggest interest. I remember touring a, a museum and they had an automated machine that was moving marbles around with, with pneumatics and servos and switches and I, I fell in love. And as you guys know, I've spent the last uh, number of years talking a lot about not only machining and metalworking, but also hopping in with videos on Arduinos and servos and switches and sensors. And I'm really excited for this video because we're gonna start combining that stuff. I've got a little project set up here where we're gonna play with Arduinos and steppers. And I've done this before. In fact, three of my most popular videos um, have been on Arduinos and motors. One of them was running an Arduino uh, with a servo, which is sort of a basic overview video that was popular. Another one was driving an Arduino and a really large stepper, a little bit beyond what we're gonna get into today with a smaller stepper, but really cool for high torque applications. Uh, and another one was using actually the same stepper driver we're going to use today, the SparkFun Big Easy driver, to create a little single axis CNC. So by all means, check those videos out if, uh, if you're interested in that topic. But today, what I wanna do is figure out, can we use a stepper to make something happen really accurately? Now, not with a lead screw like you normally see on a stepper, say on even on a 3D printer nowadays. We're gonna do things a little differently. So for some of you who are finding this video uh, from an Arduino search, um, I do a lot of machining work and we're gonna use some cool uh, machine shop measuring tools to see how precise we can get a stepper to run. Um, and then this is gonna be building up the groundwork for a bigger project, which some of you, especially the folks that have been on our Facebook page may have gotten a, a glimpse of that I'm also really excited for. Um, but I've been experimenting with this little platform here and I also wanted to just walk through two different ways of controlling this stepper with the Arduino. A simple pulsing and then using a built-in library which has some acceleration and deceleration parameters. So I'll give you a walk through the project. We're gonna play with the code and um, all this information and a bill of materials will be on our website, nyccnc.com. If you wanna see the code uh, or stuff like that, check out the website page, but uh, let's dig in. So what do we have here? First of all, don't worry, there's a bill of materials on the NYCCNC website, but I will still walk you through it all. Back left, we've got a 24 volt DC power supply that's powering our stepper motor via this red guy right here, which is SparkFun's Big Easy Driver. I happen to like it and I use it a lot for projects. And um, the stepper itself is from Adafruit, uh, but it's a standard, I think, NEMA 17 stepper motor. I've machined some pieces here, which again, if you guys subscribe, you will see more of here in the future, but I'm not gonna get into the bigger project. We're just gonna focus on um, this guy today. And uh, I use my main sort of go-to for Arduinos, and I've talked about this before, is a, actually it's a really old Arduino at this point. I think it's a 168 Dua Milanova with a liquidware um, duplicator shield and a liquidware input shield. The duplicator shield here, um, and that may be the wrong name for it, is gives me a second set of pins, which is really nice. And I also use this input shield. I've got a joystick, which uh, I'm not actually using this today, but I've got two buttons, which I like. Um, it just makes a nice, easy package. All this stuff is on top of a machinist granite block plate. It's actually not really that much different than granite in your kitchen countertops. Um, we use it to be as something that's incredibly smooth when we're measuring stuff. And speaking of measuring, what we're gonna do today is use this guy right here, which is a dial test indicator uh, mounted on a, another machinist product called a surface gauge right here. And we'll, you'll see in a second, we can adjust this and we're gonna use it to use this very, very sensitive tip here to see how accurately our Arduino and our stepper motor with this rubber ring around it can index this part back and forth. Now I'm not, um, so I'm guessing some of you are gonna jump all over me and say, well, that may not be reliable over time and there'll be slippage and there's no, there's no way of measuring it. Um, I hear you, We're, I'm gonna have a more robust solution for the end product here. But today I just wanna have some fun and see how accurate can we be? And again, looking at the two different ways of driving the stepper via the code in Arduino. Uh, but let's take a little closer look at this guy here, especially for you non-machinists. Okay, let's show off this uh, setup a little here. 
This is a Fowler dial test indicator. It's a US made one, um, decent quality, certainly better than some of the imports, not as great as say a Starrett uh, or a Japanese Mitsutoyu, uh, but not bad. And each tick that you see here is one half of one thousandth of an inch. Now, just to give you a point of reference, a sheet of standard paper, a printer paper, is about four thousandths of an inch. So you would need to see eight of these ticks to, for the, to move that needle, the thickness of a sheet of paper. So my point is pretty sensitive. So let's go ahead and use our surface gauge. And you'll notice there are two pins on the back here. I've got those pressed down. And what that does is that lets me have my gauge run along the side of my granite block. Not really necessary, but it just helps keep everything squared up uh, and keeps things from moving. So I will loosen up that pin there and we're gonna just come down close. You know, about, about like so. We don't actually want it to touch. We don't need it to touch rather. Okay. Now, zoom back in a little for you here. Now, what we'll do is we're gonna use this knob back here, which adjusts the whole tilt, and we're gonna preload our dial test indicator so it's right on that zero. So rotate it and just come right around. We're adding pressure to that tip. We'll get it on zero. Yeah, close enough. Now, we'll take another machinist product here. Oops. It might be hard to focus on here because it's shiny and thin, but this is a height gauge set. And this piece I've got here is a 2,000 piece. Um, so that piece of metal is 2,000 of an inch thick. And what we'll do is we'll try to show off here. So in theory, if this is accurate, it should move one, two, three, four ticks. Let's see what happens. We'll come in, we'll kind of swipe in to make it easy on the ball. Boom, you've got a pretty decent level of precision with this setup. Let's do a very quick overview of the hardware setup here. Uh, check out my other stepper videos, including the one on the Big Easy Driver, if you want to see some of this in more detail. Uh, but bottom line is the setup is very simple. We have the stepper motor plugged into the back here. If you purchase the Adafruit one, the colors should be the same. So we've got it going red, yellow, green, gray. The next pin is the white pin here, which is the ground. We've, so we've got a common ground across this whole setup. And the last pin here on this terminal block is a yellow pin. And that goes back to the power supply's 24 volt positive, you see right here. The front pins here, the first terminal block is empty. Next one is ground, so the white jumper that again uses the breadboard. The next pin here is the yellow pin. That pin is the step pin, and it comes over to pin 11. And then the last one is the red jumper wire, which comes into pin 10, that's direction. Uh, then we've got a common ground here for the Arduino as well. Let's look at the first piece of Arduino code, but before we do that, I'll show you what that code does. We hit the A button, goes one direction, B button, it comes back, pretty simple. We'll put the measuring test on it after we've gone through the code, but I wanna compare the two for you first. I like walking through the code pretty quickly, but hopefully it's still thorough. So the two input buttons, integers, are for the input shield. We have a stepper speed of 500. I'll come back to that. I'll also come back to total, total steps and step count. And we use the two states to debounce the button. I'll explain that in a second as well. Pin modes four and five are inputs. That's because they're buttons. We're using them as inputs. 10 and 11, again, 10 is our direction. 11 is our step. They're outputs, and we start them low. So our, our, our Arduino loop, each time we loop through, we're reading the button A and B to see if the pin has been read and the button is low. These are low when they're pressed, by the way. So when you push button B, it goes low, and if button state equals zero, I'll explain that in a second, what you do is you do a simple loop. So while the step count, which we start at zero, is less than total steps, which is 300, so that's the distance we are wanting to go, you alternate the pin 11 high and low. That's what steps the motor. You're literally just pulsing it high and low, um, writing it 10 low at the beginning. Remember, 10 is our direction, so that's telling it which way to go. Delaying microseconds stepper speed is this one right here, and I'll show a comparison, but that's literally how fast uh, it, it steps, so it's equivalent to an RPM. 
So you do that um, counting up the step count each time until it gets to, in this case, total steps of 300. Um, what we do is when we push the button low, the first time we set uh, the button state equal to one, that means that it will not run this loop again, or this if statement, until button state equals zero. That can't happen until down here, which says if the button is high, which means it's not pressed, and um, it's already been pressed, which is set to the button state equal to one, then you can set it back to zero. If you don't do this, what happens if you hold down the B button, it will finish this code, but then do it again because it sees the button has still been still being pressed. So this forces you to lift off the button and press it again, which is what we really want. Um, button A is the exact same code. The only difference is we've got pin 10 set to high, which alternates the direction, same uh, debouncing code. So that's really it. Uh, you just saw it at uh, 300 of distance and 500 speed. Let's, uh, let's speed up a little, we'll try 250 and we'll make it go even a little further just for fun to show you that. So upload that, uploaded that, should go faster and a little further. Exactly, just like so. Pretty cool, I think that's actually a really nice motion. What that is though, is it's, it's the brute force stepper control. It's just pulsing it um, immediately uh, as fast as it can and then, and then ending. Let's go look at the Acel library um, where we can control a lot more sensitive stuff. There's a lot more to this library too that I'm not gonna get into this video right now about controlling multiple steppers uh, and, and other just great features, but um, let's focus just now at least on the acceleration and deceleration. And then let's see um, what I wanted to show you guys is a test of is one more uh, accurate uh, or precise than the other. So let's take a look at, uh, actually we'll upload it and show you, show you how it works first and then we'll walk through the code. Okay, code is uploaded. Check this out, totally different. You can hear it and you can sort of see it. It's a lot easier to hear the ramp up and ramp down. So let's take a look at that code. It's pretty darn similar to the code we just looked at. Few changes. We're including this library and then we're defining a stepper within the cell stepper library on, uh, I don't know, actually even know what the one is, but 11 is the step and 10 is the direction pin. Then we uh, do two things in the setup, and this is what drives our maximum speed, and then the acceleration. We'll play with that in a second. And then the code is really the same. We have that same if statement to detect when the button is pressed and debounced, but instead of having the alternating high-low manual driving of the stepper, we issue this command stepper, run to new position, POS, and we define POS up here at 400, and no POS is not a piece of shit. Um, and then we say the button state equal to one, so we debounce it. Um, so it's really simple, it's pretty cool. Um, um, oddly, it takes less lines of code, but this library has to get uploaded, so it does, I think, take up more space on the Arduino itself, if that's something you're concerned about. Um, so you just saw it at 400 movement, um, 6,000 speed, 4,000 acceleration. Let's go a little shorter. Let's go mm, faster, but with less acceleration and just see what it does. Code is uploaded. You know, it's interesting. Um, maybe easier for you guys to see when you're watching the finished video. Kind of hard to tell the difference. And maybe that's because we're going faster, but with less acceleration. So let's go faster with faster acceleration. Now I'm at uh, 10,000 max speed, 6,000 acceleration. I think I might be at the sort of limit of what this can handle. Let's see though. Cool. I did see a little slippage on that first one. My uh, rubber gasket sliding back here. I gotta work on that design, but you guys get the idea. So pretty cool library and there are many um, applications where you wanting to have a smooth acceleration or deceleration is important, especially when you start dealing with uh, a load on the shaft itself. So, um, like I said, the reason I wanted to do all this was actually to see how accurately can I feed a piece of material or object through this uh, setup here. Now, I wanna work on the design. I'm not gonna bore you in this video about it, but uh, I think it's probably a bad idea to have a, a, a radial load on the axle shaft like this. So I might detach 
this with a spring-loaded design so it's not uh, putting such a load on the shaft like that. Uh, we'll, we'll see, but my question was, let's go grab our, uh, you know, our test indicator set up here and let's see how repetitive the motion is. Okay, I've got my test indicator set up and I've got it preloaded. So actually if you see here, oh, I don't have it preloaded. I'll give it a little bit of a, you can adjust this needle, pushing a little. So now <clears throat> when we come up, we've got a little bit of preload on the tip. And the code I've got running here is the first one, which is the manual way of running the, the manual way of controlling the stepper. Now remember, first of all, there's a lot of ways we can skin the cat here on measuring the accuracy of this. And we're not really measuring the accuracy of the stepper. We're measuring the accuracy of this whole system. And a major weak point is the rubber tension uh, and drive mechanism of this bracket here. So by all means, um, recognize this for what it is. Nevertheless, I've tried to show you how sensitive and accurate the test indicators are. So we've got it preloaded. Now what I'll do, gently, move that to zero and that looks good and we're going to go backward and forward and see where we are sorry having focus problems here uh, okay we've got it preloaded we're on zero backward forward boom backward forward spot on backward forward i think that's really cool that's incredible to me that we can repeat within that level of accuracy with a mechanical set, setup like this. You notice my wheel is rolling off here again. I got to work on that. But nevertheless, it's not slipping and it's, you know, you know, the stepper itself isn't losing steps and there's not slippage between the rubber and the aluminum. Let's try the acceleration deceleration code and see what we get. Okay, short a few thou. And this is consistent. And this is what I found when I've been experimenting with it, which I hesitate to, to blame the code because, uh, you know, the folks that wrote this are pretty, probably pretty darn sharp, but I have had problems getting this to be repeatable and knowing that we can manually drive it and get darn accurate results. My conclusion is uh, somehow, somewhere, the acceleration and deceleration or the way that's driving it just isn't as good. So be curious to see if you folks have any input on that. But for now, I'm going to stick with manually driving it and, um, you know, keep researching it and see um, just what there could be to either improve or tweak this settings so that we've got more precision and reliability out of the, um, the Accel stepper library. But needless to say, I think we've proven the point. Um, even the manually driving the stepper in Arduino can be phenomenally accurate. And I think that's really cool and uh, more good things to come. And just to satisfy uh, folks that may be asking, I think what I'm planning on doing is using a combination of, you know, rapid acceleration via the stepper and then some sort of an end switch, perhaps optical, perhaps mechanical, to creep this to the final position each time because the truth is uh, steppers are um, prone to losing steps. And if you're doing it uh, repetitively over time, that can result in a continual or growing error, and that's no good. So you do need to sort of quote unquote home the stepper, at least uh, with some frequency. So that's a wrap for today. If you've enjoyed this folks, please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up and comment below. Otherwise, like I said, uh, information available on the website at nyccnc.com. And uh, we'll be back soon with more. Thanks folks, take care.